Good morning, folks. We've got the top news from over the weekend, weather events, and a closer look at a useful public tool. Plasma filaments dancing as we come to spaceweathernews.com, where I have switched the top solar graphic because NASA's bronze 193 angstrom online resource is glitching. That is fine, however, as this helps us to see that there are no sunspots on the Earth-facing disk. And by the way, even when NASA's tools are glitching, Lockheed and Helio viewer tend to stay on point. The only feature of note in 193 angstroms is the southern coronal hole. It is turning out towards the departing limb. Despite being so far south, it is managing to have its solar wind reach up to Earth's heliographic latitude. And while the kinetic telemetry remains tame, up in blue, phi angle, we see the solar wind, magnetic field reversal, and instability, driving a bit of instability in Earth's field as well. Eyes open for more today. We'll start the weather in Thailand. They are joining India and Spain as having national level emergencies due to inundation. Residents cut off as critical infrastructure sustains damage. Up next, we're going to the polar orbiting satellites. So often we are asked about a shot of the polar zone. We are focusing on Antarctica here, but you can toggle between the North and South Poles. Takes a moment to get used to the band scan product sequences, especially if you use one of the longer wavelength returns. And that is in today's link list. And we're going to stick with Antarctica as we come to the papers. We're going to find a fun article on liquid drizzle precipitation in negative 25 degree weather. Interesting paper here blaming aerosol loading numbers for the nucleation sustained, but it is worth noting that the poles get the most cosmic rays. Those can either directly form condensation nuclei or ionize the ambient air to be the attracted mass of the nucleation, while perhaps also offering enough energy from space to remain in that liquid phase. Up next, while we have been happy to see geoengineering sky spray discourse largely shift to spraying water vapor or more commonly found and less harmful salts to seed the clouds, we do still have the volcano crowd at it again, analyzing the volcanic aerosol injection technique and modeling soil moisture. Taking a moment to remind everyone the official observer position is that they should not mess around in the sky, especially if they're going to be mimicking volcanoes and putting poisonous things up there. Folks, if anyone remembers page one of chapter seven in our book, you might need to stop yourself from peeing right now. Yes, exactly what the earthquake forecasters of South America need is coming. After post-analysis revealed that the electrodynamic precursors we seek in general can have as little as one minute lead times on the coast of Chile, they really need to get these real-time electron measurements down firm. They could feasibly offer enough warning for people to get into safe conditions. If you don't have our book, you can go to quakewatch.net and learn a lot about the factors in play for earthquake forecasting, especially the electrical ones, all for free. The Canada-France-Hawaii telescope has begun to release solid deep space data, and while it might not look like much, the different views of the tiny segments of the deep cosmos will allow them to better understand where their assumptions are failing, especially with things like dust and gas mass, emissivity, etc. And while we're talking deep space, oh boy do they want dark matter to make a last dash for the finish line. When every detector, lab, satellite, and telescope fails, you tag team them and try to use the combined power of your technologies to overcome the most expensive and egregious mistake in the history of astronomy. I am, of course, speaking to the fallacy of the Lambda Cold Dark Matter model, which is the entire premise of our Plasma Cosmology movie. That is linked below. Tons of professors and a Los Alamos scientist in that one. It can catch you up on the critical mass of astrophysical cosmology in one hour. Last but not least, a long-standing debate on monsoon genesis factors and overall rain conditions in India has been settled. The Indian Ocean Dipole was thought to drive the car with the El Nino cycles in the back seat, but actually it's the other way around. ENSO controls. You care about this because while studies tying the Indian Ocean Dipole to the sun are very rare, even mainstream climatologists have recently stopped denying the solar effect and control over El Nino and La Nina which obviously plays an enormous role in all the global patterns, modes, and oscillation modulations. The sun and climate. Just in case you somehow didn't know, we did that movie too. It's also linked below. We greatly appreciate your support. Remember to check the links below the video to learn more. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.